Hello, you must be the outsider everyone's talking about. I'm Linda Schuller. If you ever need medical attention, this is the place to come. Yes, I handle all medical needs in the bunker. If you're ever wounded, I can treat you. For a fee. Normally I'd just be the base's medical officer. But my other duties say otherwise. We have equipment here to treat most physical injuries. Lacerations, broken bones, that sort of thing. We also carry a full supply of antitoxins. You may have noticed the bark scorpions up above. Though tiny, their venom packs quite a punch. Treating scorpion stings is my most common procedure. I can also treat any form of radiation sickness you pick up out in the waste. No matter what stage. Save the last. I'm this bunker's head scribe in everything but name. I supervise the research teams. I collate the reports. I attend the meetings. But for reasons beyond me, that buffoon Taggart still gets the title. And don't get me started on that little pet of his. Everyone around here knows what's going on there but her. Oh, I tried. The Elder listened patiently to my carefully constructed argument regarding why the buffoon should lose his position. Then he just as patiently explained to me that Taggart's work was vital to our cause, and that he wasn't to be trifled with lesser matters. But vital to our cause? Hardly. I suppose I have a few things around that I can spare. Bye. The Kaisar is marked. You for death, and the weak will obey. Whoa there, pal. You better slow down, or you'll get blown up like the rest of the idiots who thought they'd scavenge in Boomer territory. Now that I've got your attention, might you be interested in a little information? It'll cost you, but it's well worth the investment. Oh, lordy lordy. You haven't heard of the Boomers? What rock have you been living under? They're a bunch of artillery slinging, grenade lobbing odd jobs camping out in Nellis. Wander into their territory, and you're as good as mincemeat. There is a way, and I'll tell you. For a little wager. Well, I know the secret to get past. If you give me the caps, I'll tell you. If you make it back alive, I'll double your money. All right, I suppose I can cut you a deal, but not a cap lower. I gotta make a living here. Okay, here you go. That page has the details, but it's all in the timing as you move from building to building. I'll be here watching, so I'll know if you've made it to the gate or not. Remember, I'll pay double your wager if you make it back. Hold it right there. Don't you move. How the hell did you survive that bombardment?
but I had you zeroed in the whole time. Nobody's that fast. Move a muscle now and I'll blow you to pieces. Then just... just stay where you are. Raquel will be here any second. I'll take this from here. I'm Raquel, Master at Arms for the Nellis Homeland. Mother Pearl, our eldest, wishes to speak to you. As I said, she is our eldest. Mother Pearl has lived at Nellis from the start, and has the wisdom of her age. She said that this day would come, and that any savage to reach our gate should be brought to her. Follow close, and mind your behavior. Welcome, child. Took your sweet time getting here, didn't you? I've been waiting a good five years for an outsider to come along and visit. Oh, so many ways. Small ones to begin with, so we can get used to what it's like to have a sev... Uh, outsider around and about. Should that go well, it may be you can help in big ways, too. We'll have to see. You have to keep in mind that you're our first contact with the outside world since I was barely a woman. Seclusion has kept us safe, but the world around us is changing. Neon lights in the distance, patrolling robots, soldiers. My youngers think our guns can keep out the world, but I think we need to let it in just a little or become its victim. You're that little bit of the world, child. Welcome to Nellis. You picked a good time to stop by, for we're swimming in problems. My youngers can tell you all about it. Raquel could use help with the bug problem. Doc Argyle has wounded he's tending to. And Loyal and Jack might be looking for help with some repairs. Or you could just go see Pete at the museum and hear the story of our people. All you have to do there is listen. Come and go as you like, help or don't help, I leave it up to you. But I hope you'll show my youngers that not every outsider needs to be blown up. I've never seen never a thought I'd go out like this. I'm not sure I wanted to. found the missing patrols, or was something else on your mind? They were all dead then. I suppose I'm not surprised. We have few friends in the world above, and many enemies. But we must turn our minds to other matters. When I sent out those patrols, I also sent three knights out on scouting missions. When the patrols failed to return, we assumed the worst and sent a single communication to the scouts to hold position and maintain radio silence. I want you to contact those scouts and gather their reports. Like the patrols, they have devices on them that will enable you to track them. When you find them, tell them you're my representative and ask them if the bears are still hunting. That should get them to talk to you. Return when you've gathered all of their reports. What do you want? And don't try anything funny. You speak truly, for it is unlikely that an outsider would know both the Elder's name and that passphrase. Very well. I've been observing the penal facility there in the distance for some time now, after having followed some rather disturbing rumors. Eventually, the NCR got around to putting the prisoners down, but not until they had wreaked havoc on nearby trade routes. Eventually, the NCR got around to putting the prisoners down, but not until they had wreaked havoc on nearby trade routes. Give this to the Elder. My observations are all within. Perhaps he will have a better idea of what this situation portends. That report must reach the Elder's hands. I have nothing further to give you. Don't take another step if you value your life. For what purpose do you approach me? Strange that the Elder should send an outsider, but I suppose he has his reasons. My observations have mostly focused on the small town to the south of here. It was cruelly attacked, its inhabitants slain nearly to the last. 
that such an act could occur so far west is nearly unthinkable. The NCR has forces in all directions and an outpost scant miles west from here. That they have not responded to this violence shows either an unwillingness or inability to properly defend their borders, which is telling. I've collected such musings in this report. Please take it to the Elder. Approach slowly, stranger. If you have no business with me, then go. Then I am sworn to report. I've been dividing my time between the camps to the north and south of here. One belongs to the NCR, the other to a band of slavers known as Caesar's Legion. I was sure the NCR would quickly win, but that has not happened. Instead, the two sides have reached a stalemate, and only occasionally send skirmishers against one another. If I didn't know better, I'd say neither side is confident enough to push for a full victory. Which seems strange given the NCR's technological edge. In any event, I've recorded my findings in this report. Please deliver it to the Elder. I'm sure he will find the contents most interesting. Have you had any luck finding the scouts? Or did you have something to discuss? I can spare a little time. What did you want to talk about? It's a protective measure that was enacted after our defeat at Helios. The NCR was hot on our heels, and we wouldn't have survived another encounter. It was decided that we would stay quiet for a time, heal the wounded, and try to come up with a new strategy. However, after we had fully recuperated, our first scouting measures showed that the NCR's presence in this region had only increased in our absence. There are now more than five times the number of NCR troops in the area as when we fought them. And we have half the number we did at Helios. And so the lockdown has been extended. To go outside would be the death of us all. We have some personnel that are allowed to travel on the surface. They trade for what we need and occasionally drop off what they acquire. We make sure that they only enter or leave the bunker while the sandstorm is active, to avoid detection. That is this base's defensive system. It serves as camouflage and masks all entry and exit from the bunker. We use it to hide our patrols and supply runners, though we still send such out at night to be extra safe. Good, let's take a look. Hmm. If I'm reading this right, it appears that the NCR's grip on this region is nowhere near as firm as I thought. I'll have to review these in detail, but these reports have given me much to think about. Thank you, Outsider. You've become someone I can count on, so I believe I can share something rather confidential with you. The device that creates the sandstorms above, that masks our comings and goings, was only intended to be used in case of emergencies. It was never meant to be used with any regularity, and the other systems here were not designed to accommodate such usage. In particular, the air filtration system simply cannot handle the quantity of sand and grit that it's been forced to cope with these last few years. As a result, the system is failing, albeit slowly. I'm told we have a scant few months before it shuts down completely. Should that happen, it will quickly become impossible to breathe here in the bunker. Already the air quality begins to slightly worsen. I would like you to find the components we need to fix this bunker's air filtration system. I cannot overstate the importance of this task. See Senior Knight Lorenzo for the details. He's the one who brought the matter to my attention, and the only other person who is aware of it. Good to see you again. What can I help you with? 
So now I'm going to have your death on my conscience, too? Great. You think you're the first person the Elders trusted with this? He sent three of our patrols out looking for those components, and they're all dead. I was the one who supplied the Elder with the location of possible sites where we could find the components, so their deaths are my fault. And now it's your turn. Well, don't say you weren't warned. I won't take the blame when you die horribly. But I can tell you're getting impatient. The items I'll need to keep the system running are a differential pressure controller, a reverse pulse cleaner, and several HEPA cartridge filters. At present, my best guess for finding the items would be to search any of the old vaults in the area. Those vaults were usually built much like these military bunkers, even using the same contractors in their constructions at times. I'll mark the vaults' locations on your map. Best of luck to you. Questions, boss? You... Benny, huh? Sorry, boss. Doesn't ring a bell. Then again, my brain isn't as sharp as it used to be. You're a veritable geyser of curiosity, boss. They're all right, I suppose. Had a bit of tough going there at the beginning. You know their first town was nearly wiped out by raiders. Anyway, they got their good points and their bad. Just like a lot of the old governments from before the war. Anything you say, boss? Hello again, those night stalkers always killing my big horners. It'll be nice to give them a piece of my mind. Hello again, dear. Such a curious little munchkin, aren't you? What do you want to know? Oh, someone wants to hear Grandma's stories. What would you like to hear, Pumpkin? This old thing? Oh, I scavenged it off a wreck in Klamath. Leo showed me how to make it all ready for chopping. Didn't you, Leo? Oh, someone wants to hear... Leo is a very bad man, Pumpkin. Yes, you are, Leo. Don't try to deny it. He tells me to do things. Terrible things. And sometimes the medicine isn't enough to keep him quiet. You shouldn't say things like that where Leo can hear you, dearie. He doesn't like it. What do you need, sugar? Talk to you soon, dear.
Is there something else I can do for you? Promising, but I won't be able to synthesize the drug anytime soon. I really should get back to my work. Hmm. There's still power, but the casing is cracked. I'm astonished that exposure to the stealth radiation could induce mutations so rapidly. More importantly, this explains why my research into this group of Night Stalkers hasn't come up with a cure for the Nightkin. There's only one avenue left for me. I need to run the Mark II test on Lily. It's the only way. Lily is eccentric, certainly, but I've never felt she was dangerous. More importantly, she asked if she could help me in some way. I've told her about the risks. And she still insists on helping me. Possibly immediate and permanent metal damage. There's a reason the Stealth Boy Mark II's never got beyond the prototype stage. Lily already has a pre-existing condition. And the experiment will likely make things worse for her. I'll be waiting. Hello again, dear. Pumpkin. Grandma's sorry about that. Sometimes she gets mad and listens to Leo when she really shouldn't. The medicine is supposed to help with that, but sometimes Grandma doesn't take it. Sometimes it makes Grandma forget things she doesn't want to forget, Pumpkin. Of course, dearie. I know it's dangerous, but it'll all turn out for the best. You'll see. I'll go to him now. It would be rude to keep him waiting. Howdy. The equipment is hooked up and ready. We can start the test as soon as you give me the go-ahead. Very well. Please, stand back. I don't want any erroneous readings. You're welcome to stay and observe if you want, though. All right, power on the stealth boy, Lily. Turning it on. Feels strange. Strange, but good. Interesting. Try thinking aggressive thoughts now. Think about smashing a rad scorpion. Ah, Lily smash! Yeah! How are those readings looking, Calamity? Stealth field is unstable and scrambling things. The reading says gamma wave activity is zero. But that can't possibly be right. Gamma wave activity is... zero. That can't be right. Must be a result of the interference. All right, we're done here. Go ahead and power the stealth boy down, Lily. Oh, I liked having it on. I'll get back to you on that in a moment, once I've analyzed the results. Uh-oh. Well, well. Congratulations on getting the Mark II prototype functional, Doctor. Now, just hand it over, and we'll be on our way. My request is perfectly reasonable. Give us the stealth boy specs, and there will be no need for us to splatter the room with your insides. There are caches of stealth boys out there. With a Mark II in hand, it shouldn't be difficult to upgrade every one of them. Our lives our decision to make. We're tired of sitting around in Jacobstown, waiting for a cure. No, I didn't. Not until now, anyway. Very well, Schumann. You've made your point, and I withdraw my request. Don't look at me. Nice work with the Nightkin. I've never seen anyone able to talk their kind out of anything once they had their mind set to it. I got a lot of useful data from the experiment, and am a lot closer to a cure than before. It's occurred to me that this brief test might not yield a cure anytime soon. However, if Lily were to continue to wear the prototype... That's... brilliant. Simple yet elegant. I can't believe I didn't think of that. 
bother someone else. I don't want anything to do with you. The stealth boys we use have cumulative adverse effects on our minds. But thanks to you, it seems a cure is on the way at last. Finally. Bother someone else. I don't want anything to do with you. Better watch out. Lily's been babbling about her grandkids again. I like how you handled Keen. Without the Nightkin around, Jacobstown would be much weaker than it is. See you.